down this little gadget here, which I'll show you a little bit later what to do with it. After doing my education in Switzerland, I worked there. And there, uh, when you want to cross the street, all you have to do is just stand at the edge, and the truck will come back. Cross the stop, and you cut up. If you're on a zebra, you know, zebra means that strip of land where there are white stripes is actually something, a place, river. You know, it's something very important. You don't cross a zebra. The cars don't cross a zebra when there is a person trying to cross the road. Even a dog wants to cross the road, the car stops. Having gone through that for a number of years, I got an offer to work in Oxford. So I said, let me look at this town, what this Oxford is like. Here it is. Beautiful town, uh, lovely streets, nice houses, and a heritage building, beautiful road, place for pedestrians to walk, the footpaths, trees, and the place for tracks for bicycles. This is in late 70s, that is. A normal road. There was even a bicycle kept aside on the you can you can rent a bike at that time. Very good public transport. That was the Oxford. Same time that I got an offer to come back to Pune. I work in Pune, my hometown. 79. And they said, you know, it's the Oxford of the East. So I decided to come back. And I have to make life. And uh, pedestrian as I was, I was walking there. And my feet just went into ditches. And things haven't changed since then. That was the Oxford of the East. The streets were like that. You saw the previous slide. The bicycles, all put, I mean, more bikes put on one side of the street. The other side was only for the pedestrians. Here, part of the roads are taken over by bikes. The rest is of ditches. And other part of the road is taken over by stalls. Pedestrians don't have a place to walk. The next one. Here you can see there another example. The the, all these stalls have taken over pedestrians. Who has allowed them to do that? Well, our great municipal corporation collects taxes from them. And naturally, we have nothing to say because we like to buy pan and beans and cigarettes. So it's very convenient for us to go to the stall and gather around the stall and the friends get around and we talk nicely. It's a kind of place to socialize. And the poor old man, 80-year-old man, is trying to walk in the street and he's coming there and he's wondering what to do. And you know, these guys are standing there, how dare you come here? And the poor guy is just waiting and listen until somebody sweeps the path for him or her to that path. Then you look at what happens in the traffic. This is a traffic waiting for the, the red light is on, waiting for green to go. Now it's very interesting. We have a law according to which all bikers must wear a helmet. Now, this law was actually introduced, and there are a you know, number of suddenly youth movements came up and started protesting. How can you, we are a democracy, how can you impose such a law? And you can see most of them are not wearing helmets. Uh, there is a slave family of four. It's totally against the law. Then there's this lady who has this very unusual kind of helmet. I'll show you how it's done. It's very, ex and actually it's extraordinary. It's one of the peculiarities, very special thing in Pune. It actually started in Pune. When I came to the Oxford of the East, within about two years, this movement started in Pune. Where, you know, Talibanization more or less, what you can call it. 
Another one, there's a zebra. There's actually a zebra. And, uh, this guy is trying to cross, but there is this little mouthy. He says, okay, anyway, you have gone now. Now it's my turn. I suppose he learned the zebra. So the next guy doesn't come on that side. Again, you can see here unusually one of the unusual pictures. There are more, there are three guys who wearing a helmet, uh, while the others aren't in the next one, please. Uh, here is a, another waiting in the traffic light. You can see all those. Look at that lady. Isn't she beautiful? And very colorful. These are the great things that Pune has to offer to you. This great sight, you can't see a face anymore on a motorbike. You see this lovely, uh, you know, the, the well, as we call it in French, of holding on the, the scarves, covering up the face because there is a mystery behind them. And uh, let me tell you what happens if you decide to wear a helmet. People think that you are growing horns. And if you decide, instead of wearing a helmet, to still protect your uh, face and skin, then the cosmetics expert has convinced the lady somehow that wearing helmet is not good. Because you know what it does is that it covers your face. You can't see properly. Your vision is blocked as if, as if she can see by. <laughs> So what they do, and I'm going to try to imitate what's going on. It's really funny, actually. You know what? about 200 to 350 microns, no less. So all air and dust particle is going through the cosmetic expert who is trying to convince you that it's good to say that beauty of the skin and the skin care, <laughs> it's all nonsense. They don't realize that. But the cost for every third fall of a helmetless biker leads to head injury. And every third of the injury, head injury, leads to paralysis. And every second of the paralysis leads to death. Now this is what's happening to our youth. This is what is happening to our bikers, whether they're young or not. This is an enormous cost on the economy that we are paying. And I think, I think it's time to take up this cause, please. Wear helmets. Keep your beauty tracks, and keep your. Even if people think that you've got horns growing, start this movement. Tell the next friend of yours, wear the helmet. It's not only to protect yourself, but also you protect everybody else. You, you are, we are. We are the posterity of this nation. And therefore, protecting all of us becomes very important. Now, this, all this is all right. These are all personal issues, but it concerns the traffic. And what is traffic really? Traffic is a corridor which allows flow of personnel, of material. It's what they call roads, or lanes, or bylanes. These, some of these bylanes and roads come in naturally as the communities begin to form, as with the nucleus of a house in a power plant comes the second house and third, and so lanes, by lanes are formed to form. 
on, and then they grow as the community grows. In the planning of this, in the planning of this kind of scenario, large communities, when they become large cities, then you get these roads. Now, the roads are formed in the small community, and as the community becomes big, then the roads become too small, too congested. They cannot cope up with the population. They cannot cope up with the flow. This is what has happened to Pula. In Pula, we have a scenario where we cannot, our roads cannot keep up with the, our roads cannot keep up with the, um, with the traffic and the number of vehicles which we have. In Pula today, more than 300 licenses are issued for drivers, automobile or bike drivers. There are two, more than 250 license uh, uh, issues for new cars and bikes in Pune, a town which cannot hang up or hold on to this type of uh, invasion of the population of drivers on one hand and the vehicles on the other hand. I think the time has come for all of us to sit down and decide we got to stop and we must stop and think it over. Maybe we should have an area traffic survey. And in the middle of all this, the last statement is that the people who are governing us or say that or controlling or saying that they are uh, implementing rules, regulations, and constructing roads and regulating flow of the traffic don't know what they're doing because they have never done what is simulation. They have never done actually counting of how many people are actually using the road and the flow 